On this episode of China Uncensored, a bribery trial of a Chinese national shows that China's Belt and Road deals can be pretty shady. Hi, welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Dr. Patrick Ho, former Hong Kong Secretary for Home Affairs with a smile fit for a king, Pin. He's a big name in China. Here he is with film star Jackie Chan at some weird art show in 2004. Supposedly, they're holding up their hands in a universal sign of peace, love, and international understanding. Or maybe they were planning on making a sequel to my favorite kung fu flick, Dirty Ho. But Dr. Ho left Hong Kong politics in 2007. He eventually became a global pitchman for a Chinese energy company that's key to the Chinese Communist Party's Belt and Road Initiative. That is, the party's scheme for global domination. Dr. Ho got another chance to put his hands in the air last year in November when New York police arrested him on charges of bribing African government officials through U.S. financial institutions. The 69-year-old dealmaker is accused of using a U.S.-based think tank with links to the United Nations to funnel $2.9 million worth of bribes to senior officials in Africa. They were billed as donations. But if these donations were in fact bribes to foreign officials, they would violate the American Foreign Corrupt Practices Act because his think tank is registered in the U.S. Around the time of his arrest, acting Manhattan U.S. Attorney June Kim said, in an international corruption scheme that spanned the globe, Patrick Ho and Chek Gaudio allegedly conspired to bribe African government officials on behalf of a Chinese energy conglomerate. Chek Gaudio is the former foreign minister of Senegal. He was allegedly Dr. Ho's co-conspirator. I say was because he's made a deal with prosecutors and is testifying against Dr. Ho in exchange for getting the charges against himself dropped. I mean, is there no honor among thieves anymore? What's the world coming to? The Chinese Communist Party even has a new term for betraying your partners out of self-interest. They call it win-win mutual cooperation. So, Dr. Ho could end up in U.S. prison for up to 20 years if the jury finds him guilty. He's been held for the past year without bail, and his trial begins this week. Prosecutors say Dr. Ho used a U.S.-based think tank funded by CEFC China Energy and leveraged his connections at the U.N. to funnel $2 million to the president of Chad. Prosecutors also say he gave half a million dollars to the foreign minister of Uganda. Both of the um, charitable contributions were in exchange for valuable oil rights for CEFC. CEFC is a company from Shanghai led by a guy with ties to the People's Liberation Army and Chinese military intelligence. CFC has invested about $20 billion in Belt and Road Initiative projects, largely to acquire oil. The Belt and Road is China's trillion-dollar plan to build trade corridors across the world. So, a mysterious think tank secretly has ties to military intelligence and carries out operations around the world. It sounds like Patrick Ho is just a 300-pound evil MacGyver. But instead of using duct tape and a Swiss army knife to solve problems for the Phoenix Foundation, MacGyver's think tank, Dr. Ho just used his think tank to give the bad guys lots of money, allegedly. But regardless of whether the jury finds Dr. Ho guilty, this whole affair is reflecting really, really badly on China's Belt and Road Initiative. The Communist Party says the Belt and Road is all about helping the developing world. They've been using it to position China as globalization's BFF. Dr. O has been one of its biggest promoters. Since 2013, he's hosted annual China Story forums at the United Nations. Last year, he coined the concept of Belt and Road as Globalization 2.0, a buzzword quickly adopted by Chinese state-run media that went viral. Globalization 1.0 was the colonization and multinationalism led by Western nations. But version 2.0, led by the world's biggest authoritarian regime, is definitely going to be much better. Sadly, Dr. Ho's trial threatens to expose some of the bugs in Globalization 2.0. And it comes at a time when the Trump administration is already calling out China for bad behavior in global commerce, tightening scrutiny over Chinese investments, and prosecuting economic espionage. 
Robert Pratt, a U.S. criminal law expert, told the Wall Street Journal that one of the goals of the Patrick Ho prosecution is to put a spotlight on China's use of foreign bribery to win contracts for Belt and Road. And since Dr. Ho's fall from grace, the fortunes of CEFC China Energy, which funded his think tank, have also taken a tumble. Earlier this year, Chinese authorities arrested the head of CEFC, Ye Jianming, wiping out $153 million in stock market value in the process. While no formal charges have been announced for Mr. Ye, he was named in a Chinese court case last month as a bribe giver during the conviction of a provincial governor for corruption. And he's got something to worry about, because unlike America, where a bribery conviction might land you in an orange jumpsuit for a few decades, in China, Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign is deadly business. Just look at the former deputy mayor of Luliang, who, according to Chinese state-run media, did not restrain himself and crazily took bribes to the tune of $160 million. As punishment, they took away his black hair dye before the trial and then executed him immediately. So actually, Dr. Ho should thank his lucky stars he's facing trial in the U.S., where at worst, he'll end up behind bars and be forced to make some interesting new friends. So what do you think about Dr. Ho's trial? Leave your comments below. And before you go, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you who supports China Uncensored through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Ted Kanguy asks, Will hyperinflation happen in China due to overspending in construction? Will China become like Venezuela, where people are starving and can't afford food? Good question, Ted. It's possible hyperinflation could happen in China, but it's not likely to happen just because of overspending in construction. Hyperinflation is where prices rise so quickly that the cost of everyday items grows literally every day. In Venezuela, prices have risen so fast that stores started weighing money instead of wasting time counting it. To simplify things a lot, hyperinflation tends to happen when consumers and businesses massively lose confidence in the currency. And then the government is forced to print extra money to cover expenses, which just causes more inflation. In China, however, the government has massive foreign currency reserves, including $3 trillion worth of U.S. dollars. Foreign reserves can help China stabilize its currency. Not to say that China doesn't have economic problems caused, for example, by building too many bridges or too many apartments that average workers can't afford. Or problems resulting from U.S. trade tariffs that hurt Chinese manufacturing. That being said, China's economic problems won't necessarily lead to hyperinflation. It's possible, but not that likely. The problems might just cause people to lose confidence in the ruling regime. Thanks for your question, Ted. And for everyone else, do you want me to keep making episodes of China Uncensored? Please support our continued growth by pledging a dollar or more per episode by going to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Or pledge two dollars per episode because you never know when inflation is going to kick in. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.